This light and airy orange chiffon cake is bursting with bright citrus flavor from the zest and juice in the batter to the candied orange peel garnish. So we have two cups of all-purpose flour, four teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And you'll see as I proceed with the recipe what made this a little unusual from the usual cake batter. And we should add also one cup of granulated sugar. So whisk these things all together. Basically, you can do this without an electric mixer, this whole cake, if you have a big wire balloon whisk to beat the egg whites into a meringue-like texture. So here's our dry ingredients. Make a well in the dry ingredients. Making a well is sort of like making a volcano. So there's our well. Six large egg yolks, bright yellow, easy, pretty. And it's baked in a angel food cake pan, so you have to have one of those. A quarter of a cup of cold water into the egg yolks. A half a cup of safflower oil. Use a very flavorless, pure oil. Safflower works very well in a cake like this. And the half a cup of orange juice. Whisk the eggs. And as you whisk, the flour gradually becomes incorporated. So that's a pretty batter, which will only get prettier as I add two tablespoons bright colored orange zest. And with all baking projects, always start with getting all your ingredients in order. So they're ready for the next step, which is to incorporate the beaten egg whites right into the batter. So in the bowl of the electric mixer, there are the six egg whites from the six egg yolks. And we need a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar really does help keep the egg whites dry and also makes them fluffier. And a half a cup of granulated sugar to make those egg whites glossy and pretty and they will tend to break less. And if you know what I mean by breaking, sort of separate into dry clods. You want a silky egg white. Now check your egg whites. You don't want them too stiff. Soft peak, looks good. Release your beater and shake off the excess. Now these will get folded right into the batter. Fold a little bit first into the batter. Folds in so nicely, very smooth. And do not grease your cake pan. Angel Food cake pans have kind of a specially spun surface, which allows the cake to climb up the sides of the pan and stick there. It is folding in beautifully. What a voluminous batter. And who would have guessed that you could get this out of those ingredients? There. So now, get your batter into the cake pan. Mm, so beautiful. And get this right into your oven. Preheated to 325 degrees, 55 to 60 minutes. 325, set your timer. When it comes out of the oven, this is what it looks like. Look how beautiful. Uh, all the way up to the top of the pan, should rest upside down on these little legs. That's why they're there, until it's totally cool. Then turn it over, and with a very sharp, thin knife, this kind of salmon slicer really works extremely well. Insert the knife right at the edge of the pan and go all the way around, releasing the cake, trying to stay completely next to the edge because you don't want to hurt the look of the cake. That should come out. Now lift, or better yet, turn. There, oh, goody goody. Oh, excellent. Remember, this cake only has oil in it, so that's the only thing that's making it come away from the metal. And then go all the way around the bottom. I think it'll come undone. 
and then invert this right down onto your beautiful cake stand. Ah, oh, an orange chiffon cake. What fun and how pretty and how light and how airy. Now to serve, use a serrated knife to lightly cut through this extremely light cake. There. And look at the beautiful texture, the beautiful color. It's superb. And on plates like this with uh, a little bit of whipped cream right here, and a little amount of these beautiful shoestring candied oranges, you have a very pretty and not too rich dessert. You'll certainly want to share this chiffon cake with your friends. Couldn't be more beautiful. Enjoy. When I first tasted shaker lemon pie, I was struck by its refined simplicity. It has a flaky golden crust and a three ingredient filling, and it is a citrus recipe not to be missed. The filling is so simple, it's just 14 ounces of lemon, nice juicy thin skinned lemons, some with the rind on, some with the rind removed, and it really takes a little concentration and a very sharp knife to slice the lemon paper thin. If you have a little electric meat slicer, this process really is so simple. We have a lot of pits in this one I'm gonna to have to remove because you don't want lemon pits in your shaker lemon pie. Now the second lemon, uh, we want to actually take the rind off. And this is very easy, you just go this way, taking off as little of the flesh of the lemon as possible. And then slice your lemon thin. And again, just remove any visible pits. So once you've sliced the lemons, add three cups of granulated sugar. Every shaker dessert recipe that I've read involves quite a bit of sugar. Now this should sit just like this overnight, covered at room temperature and that's ready for some time tomorrow. So you see that the sugar has softened the lemons and the lemons have dissolved the sugar. So that's the beginning of our filling and we have six eggs to add to this. So six farm fresh eggs. And if you know anything about the shakers, one of their most used inventions is the flat broom and their furniture, pretty much second to none in simple modernity made in the 19th century. So here, pour your six eggs into your lemon mixture. Stir well to mix. And that's your filling. Now I have my pie crust, which is a nice, perfect pat brise, already rolled out in a nine inch pie dish. This just fills the dish. And the second round, the top right here, I like to cut six slits about an inch apart on the top of the pie to let steam escape, and it makes a pretty design. And then this gets placed right over the lemon filling. And go all the way around, pressing the two together, the top to the bottom. And you'll want nice big flutes around the entire top. But first I'm going to trim, leaving about a half inch overhang. And your oven has to be preheated because like most pies, you start in a hot oven. This is a 450 degree oven for 20 minutes. And then you can reduce the heat a little bit and bake at 375 degrees until the crust is golden brown and shiny. And that will be about 30 minutes longer. Now notice I'm turning under this cut edge. This nice thick roll will allow me to flute prettily. I love this pie. You can't imagine what it tastes like, but if you're a citrus lover, this is a pie to make and try. There, now with your two fingers and your thumb, make a pretty edge. And everybody's edges are different. 
and there are many different edges to master. Now a little egg white, so just quickly brush the top of the pie with a little egg white. You could use a yolk and cream, you could use just cream, but I find the egg white with the glazing sugar makes a very pretty top crust. And this is that glazing or sanding sugar that makes the crust shine and taste really good. So right into the oven and in about an hour, you're gonna have a beautiful pie. So here's the pie. Mm, so beautiful. So you can see all the pieces of lemon in here. I've been making this recipe for years and you will be too, enjoy. If you like key lime pie, here's another favorite to add to your list. Mouth-watering lime squares with pistachio graham cracker crust. Two thirds of a cup of pistachios. Grind them up, these are unsalted. Just the nuts until a fine powder. So they're nicely ground. You can still see a little bit of the nut, but that nice bright green pistachio is certainly in evidence. Now mix that with a half a cup of graham cracker crumbs. And you can grind the graham crackers in here too. A quarter of a cup of granulated sugar. Four tablespoons of melted butter. And you can cool that melted butter. And the zest of a lime or two, about a tablespoon of zest. Now process this for a second or two. And that's basically your crust. Very, very easy, just like a graham cracker crust. And here we have our baking pan. It's a eight inch square pan. Butter the bottom and the sides and line the pan with two sheets of parchment paper. This is a very nice way to prepare this kind of square baking pan for bar cookies, for brownies. It helps you remove your baked goods very easily with no cracking, no crumbling. And this can go right here. Secure the edges with these binder clips, which you should have in your baking drawer or in your desk drawer or somewhere in your kitchen. See how nice and neat that is? Now butter again. And all of this should be done before you start the process of making the crust and the filling. I'm just a little out of order. And so there, that is perfect. Now you can just put all the pie crust right in the bottom and you can use the bottom of a glass to flatten it to an even thickness and take some of it up the sides, approximately an inch up the sides of the pan. This is pre-baked, then filled, then baked again. So have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. And use your fingertips to make a little edge. And this can go straight into the 350 degree oven. Eight to 12 minutes. So now the filling is two egg yolks beaten with one whole can of sweetened condensed milk. This is a 14 ounce can of milk that is mixed with sugar and cooked until it is thick and delicious. So mix that up. And to that, a half a cup of impeccably fresh lime juice. Make sure you have just squeezed this lime juice. This is no place to be using canned or bottled lime juice. It will not taste the same. Mm, so beautiful. Now pour this right into your crust. Now that's what the crust looks like after it's baked. Really pretty, has a little bit of an edge and just pour your lime filling right on top. Spread it evenly. You don't want any bubbles. That has to bake now at 350 for about 15 minutes, just until it's set. 
and then the whole thing gets chilled and will be ready to cut and enjoy. So now you can lift right out of the pan. There. Takes a little coaxing. And this should make about 16 squares. So that's four by four. And cut down the middle first. And another cut. And another cut. Arrange them on a serving tray. Very beautiful and extremely tasty. And they're quite solid and quite easy to handle. So this looks amazing and guess what? Because I've changed a square into a rectangle, I have one left for me. I can't wait to try it and you should not wait to try it either. Lime squares with pistachio graham cracker crust. When was the last time you made an upside down cake? Upside down cakes gained popularity in the 1930s and numerous versions have been dreamed up ever since. Today, with the help of renowned pastry chef and teacher, Karen Damasco. Hi, Karen. Hi. We're updating this old fashioned classic and we're making a citrus upside down cake bursting with the citrusy flavor of beautiful oranges and grapefruits and kumquats. Mm -hmm. It looks delicious and I can't wait to try it. How long have you been making this particular kind of cake? Oh, upside down cakes are one of my favorite cakes. So I've been making them for years and years. I think I've made just about every different upside down cake you could think of. The old pineapple upside down oh, cake? Sure, oh, sure, yeah. but then figs, apples, pears. Citrus is actually very beautiful. This is one of my favorite upside It is, down and cakes. different. So I'm making the uh, sort of like the, the schmear. Yes. To go in the bottom of mm -hmm. the pan and it's three tablespoons of melted cooled butter and three quarters of a cup of light brown light sugar. Br light brown sugar, okay. yeah. And that's a new old term for what goes in the bottom of the pan to let the fruit kind of not stick and melt into it, right? Oh yeah, the juice from the fruit and the sugar, it creates this delicious sauce for the cake. The cake absorbs it and it makes them shiny and it's just a beautiful thing. I'm starting the citrus. So that getting... is a beautiful color. Wow, is yeah. that gorgeous. Oh, the citrus is just great. Try to find citrus, of course, that doesn't have pits. Yeah, you can be really flexible with this cake. When blood oranges are around, I love to use blood oranges. I always love to use kumquats. You can use the whole entire fruit, and it's such a bright color, and it's such a tangy flavor. And it's small, and it fits in the little nooks and yeah, crannies, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. It really that. pops out, yeah. So. Okay, so now I just press this down? Mm -hmm, and okay. spread it out as best you can. Okay. And then what's the cake? It's a butter cake, but it has lots of fresh grated nutmeg and orange and lemon zest. So mm, it's yeah. really, it packs a punch. It's very flavorful. And so you make the design. Okay. So I like to always start with the kumquats on the bottom so that when you unmold the cake, oh. the kumquats are on the top. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, so i make a little pattern with the kumquats. And then we'll just start laying the other citrus. I stagger them so you have different colors next to each other. And I'm shingling them a little bit. So they're almost laying flat. Shingling is overlapping little bits, mm -hmm. like a roof shingle. Exactly. And be sure as you go along, you take out any seeds that you find, because that's not going to be pleasant in the finished cake. We'll get a bit one more in there. And you can go right over the kumquats, because they're going to still come out on oh, top. Oh, I see. OK. Yeah. So that's it. Um, Martha, if you wouldn't mind getting the dry ingredients together. OK. No. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking powder. Mm -hmm. Oh, baking soda. Oh, do you have buttermilk in this or? I have lemon juice uh, and milk and okay. sour cream. Yes, so a half a teaspoon baking soda. And I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice over here. I have the milk. I need about a and tablespoon. A whole teaspoon of nutmeg? Yes. There's nothing like fresh grated nutmeg. I always grate my own. Yeah. I think it's just so important. Uh, I mean, I can smell it from over here. It's like perfume. So a teaspoon is about a half of a good sized nutmeg. Exactly. Okay, and sometimes there. I'll just grate it right into mm. the bowl just to Very make sure aromatic. you get every last drop. So we're going to put in one and a half cups of cake flour. 
Now, do you make your own or do you buy cake flour? I usually buy it. Actually, I've never made my own. How do you make your own? I don't know. I was asking you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to teach me a new, really amazing trick. It's basically an all-purpose flour lightened right. with, uh, with a little, a little cornstarch. Corn yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So in the mixer, I have a stick of butter. I'm going to add one-third cup of granulated sugar, and then we're also going to get the light brown sugar and add a third of a cup of Oh, fat. Need more, okay. Yeah, and I'm also going to put one whole orange zest. Thank there. you. And the zest of one lemon in there too. So it's very zesty cake. Yes. So we're gonna start mixing this and you really want to cream this butter and sugar. So do you add the eggs now? Yes, I'm gonna add, so, this is one egg and one yolk. So I'm gonna add, yeah, half of it first and we'll let that really incorporate before we add the next. And then the milk is uh, whole milk? Yes, a whole milk and sour cream and then a tablespoon of lemon juice. So you're making kind of a buttermilk. Exactly. And so your batter now is nice and light. So do you wanna start by adding about a third of the dry? Turn it down a bit. And once you start adding the dry, you really want to turn the mixture down and be conscious of how much you're mixing. So now you're just you mixing don't want to, to combine. Mix. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and it did yeah. curdle the milk. Yeah. Look, the lemon juice and the milk really did a curdling mm -hmm. number. Now, do you end with milk or do you end with dry ingredients? Uh, we're going to end with milk. Okay. So there, oh, the, yeah. there's Finish the end. It off. We'll add the last bit of milk, and now we'll turn it off. So just give it a scrape. So it'll be a dense, buttery cake. Yeah. yeah. You need, Lovely. when you're making an upside down cake, you need a dense cake to hold up all that fruit and the sauce. Because it's going to absorb some of the sauce. And a really light cake is just going to fall apart. Is the cake pan buttered? Yes, the okay. cake pan's buttered and lined with parchment and then buttered on top mm. of parchment as well. So at what temperature? 350. It's going to take 50 to 60 minutes. Oh, long. Mm -hmm. OK, so into the oven, set your timer. Well, the cake is a beautiful golden brown color, and it's a little domed, so you're going to cut that off so that... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that the fruit doesn't slide off when it's when inverted. When we invert it. You don't want to wait until it's all the way cooled before you flip it. Because that sugary syrup will stick, right? It's just going to stick right to the pan. So okay. I'm going to flip this off. All right. Okay, so inversion. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is always the nerve-wracking. <gasps> yes. You can also run a knife around the edge. Now that's a beautiful cake and so delicious. Well, Karen, thank you so much for a great recipe. Thank you. And come back anytime with a great idea like this. We love, love it. To. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for tuning in. And please join me for the next episode of Martha Bakes. With a vegetable peeler, remove orange zest in strips and slice into matchsticks. Bring a half a cup of sugar and one cup of water to a boil in a small saucepan. Add the zest and reduce heat to medium. Cook until the zest is soft, about 15 minutes. Transfer the zest to a wax paper lined baking sheet and let cool. Then toss with two tablespoons of sugar before using as a garnish on your favorite cake.